What's cooking, everybody? I'm Baconopteryx, and welcome to Outer Wilds. Oh, let me tell you, I've heard a lot of good things about this game, but nobody has told me crap about what it's actually about. So I'm really interested to get into it and find out. Hmm. Yeah, all I really know is that it's a spacey game, and apparently there's banjo music. That's about it. All right, let's get into it, though. Wake up. That's a pretty sight. Oh, I just woke up staring at the sky. Okay. Whoa, am I an alien? Huh. Hey, buddy. Slate, how's it going? There's our pilot. Back from your pre-launch camp out under the stars, I see. So it's launch day, eh? Seems like only yesterday you joined the space program, and suddenly here you are, leaving on your first solo voyage. What do you say? Ready to get this beauty off the ground? It's all fueled up and ready to go. Yeah, all systems ready. Glad you're excited. But remember... If you wreck the ship, I'm not building you a new one. I'm not made of lightweight re-entry grade aluminum alloys, you know. Anyway, you'll need to get the launch codes from Hornfells at the observatory before you can lift off. Just bring those here once you've said your goodbyes or whatever. Huh. I didn't know I was gonna be... <laughs> I was gonna be an alien. Hold on, I, I should change my sensitivity. This is so high. Ah, that's much better. All right. I, I kind of want to roast a marshmallow. <laughs> Move stick, extend stick. Oh, no, I caught it on fire. I can eat it. Yeah, yeah. Replace. Hold on, I got this. Ah, there we go. Who's, who's playing music? Ah, flip, not again. Oop, I ate it on accident this time. Okay, good enough. Interesting. Okay, this is already different from what I was expecting, which I really didn't have a whole lot of expectations, but, you know, still. So what's going on here? So, it doesn't seem like there's a sprint key. Oh, what the? Okay, the jump is interesting. Uh, what is... Do I have to go... Oh yeah, there's that's the launch codes and stuff. Okay, I already love this music. Oh, come on. I, I just slammed my shins against the rock. That can't feel good. This is a pretty game. I like it already. Fly... What? Fly model ship? It's a horizontal thrust, down slash up thrust... Uh, uh, oh, oh no. Oh, that's awkward. Oh, thank goodness. If I have to fly actual ships like this, this is going to be a problem. Uh, aha. No, let's not do that. Ah, hold on. I got this. I got this. Horizontal thrust. All right, what if I just... Oh, no, let's not. This is... <laughs> okay, let's just... Softly go forward. Yeah. Like, let's try landing on one of these platforms. Oh, I almost had it. Here, wait, hold on. So it would have to... Oh, there we go. I landed. Okay. That was fun. Oh, hello. You are tiny. What a landing. I guess that's why Slate lets you fly the real thing, huh? Oh, that's it. Were, were you there when I walked up? I don't feel like you were. Well, look at all these people. Porphy. Hey, oh, hatchling. I hear you're leaving us to seek adventure among the stars. When you return, let's you, me, and Gus and Cat er, open up a bottle of the good stuff. 
I'm only seeking adventure amongst one star, actually. Other stars are too far away. The good stuff is less delicious sap wine and more daunting digestive challenge. All right. Another metaphor ruined in the name of scientific accuracy. Nevertheless, I do hope you enjoy your travels. Good luck. Okay, thank you. Is the sun, like, actually moving in real time? I feel like the lighting is changing a lot. Who are you, sir? Rutile. You're actually blasting off in that thing, huh? They don't explode as often anymore. I'm told my odds of survival are statistically quite high. <laughs> yeah, the space program certainly come a long way. I should probably thank you for causing fewer flash fires than your predecessors. By the way, good luck with those retro rockets. Okay, whatever that means. Use satellite camera. This projector is linked to our Sky Shutter's satellite, which is currently orbiting Timber Hearth. The satellite is equipped with two onboard cameras. If See if you can take a snapshot of our village. Forward snapshot, rear view snapshot. What? So if I just spam back and forth between these two? Oh, whoa. That's cool. It's actually like real time. How big is this planet? Or whatever it is that we're on. What is this anyway? Wait, is this something that's moving in real time? Like, if I just leave it alone? Yeah. It's, like, actually moving in real time. If I leave it alone for a second, it moves quite a bit. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Electric chair? No, just kidding. <laughs> Read. This pilot seat, used by pioneering astronaut Feldspar, is all that remains of our inaugural flight into space. Although it's been argued such a distinction requires a breathtakingly liberal definition of flight, that day will nevertheless always be remembered as a landmark achievement in Harthian history. Huh. So is our planet called Hearth, then? That's the second time I've seen something like that. Ooh, the suit. Man, this is already such a neat different little vibe than I really was expecting. Morrow, can I go in here? No. Okay. It's so weird. It's like this an awesome little rural village, and yet I'm getting ready to go to space. That's so funny. Also, how fast is the day-night cycle here? Goodness. What is that? Is that like the satellite all the way up there? Or is that the satellite? And a comet? Goodness, and... Hold on, that's not attached. Uh, I should stop asking questions. Marl. So it's launch day, huh? How's going to miss you? Speaking of launch day, I was thinking about it, and the platform those ships launch from is getting old. Isn't it about time you built a new, less flammable one? That big tree in the village would be perfect choice. I wouldn't mind helping out the space program. Just say the word. <laughs> nice try. We all know you have it out for that tree. <laughs> what? No, I just think it's in the way, and someone ought to chop it down, you know? Specifically me. <laughs> you think this has to do with the time I fell out of it and broke my arm? That was when we were hatchlings. Who would hold a grudge for that long? Right. Nice. Uh, let's see. Hello there, space cadet. I hear you're leaving the crater today. If you meet any of the other travelers up there, remind them to take proper care of their instruments, won't you? About the traveler's instruments? Where's the observatory? Okay, you can actually give me information. Oh, sure. I made all of their instruments, you know. Let me see. There's Chert's drums. Rebeck's banjo and Gabro's flute. And Feldspar's harmonica, of course. Though Feldspar's been missing for a long time. Sometimes it feels like just yesterday they were playing their harmonica around the campfire. 
Anyway, you hear music in space. That'll be one of the space programs of the travelers. If you feel like company, you can always pull out your signal scope and track them down. Hmm. Trouble is, every time a Harthian leaves for outer space, that's one less musician in our orchestra. Hmm. Where's the observatory? It's questions like that that may... <laughs> it's questions like that what make us worried about you going up into space on your own, you know. The observatory is the is up the path behind the waterfall. There are a couple signs marking the way, but really, you should ju you just keep going and then hook a right when you get to the zero G cave. <laughs> Ooh, zero G cave. How much, like, how much do I have to explore before I find these uh, launch goats? It wants me to go through all these people, doesn't it? What if I just say no and keep going? No. Children, I assume. Hello, astronaut. If it isn't my favorite troublemaker. <laughs> we wanted to play hide and seek, but Moraine won't let us borrow their signal scope because it's really delicate and not supposed to be thrown around like that. Hey, hey, can we use your signal scope? Can we? Can we please? We'll even let you be it. Okay. You want me to play a game. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay, here are the rules. Galena and me will hide these with these radios, and you'll use your signal scope to find us. Last one to be found wins. Okay, close your eyes and start counting. <laughs> the, I like that effect. It, it uh, accounts for the um, double set of eyes. Okay. Already learning how to use this. Okay, so they're up. Uh right in front of me but I can't jump that high which means I probably have to find another way to get right there yeah what the heck alright so ha Ooh. okay good to know I can just walk into the river alright wait oh okay what about the other one? Why is the other one? Oh, the further down I go, the other. Oh, what? They're both roughly like right here. Oh, that one is even farther. Like this one is roughly right here. And, but this one is down or over. Oh, how far are you behind the waterfall? Interesting. Hello, everyone. I'll talk to you. Yeah, you're right there. I see you now. Gotcha. Talk to Tefra. Oh, you found me. But my hiding spot was super good. Don't forget, you have to find both of us, okay? Okay. Oh, right there. Frequency, hide and seek. All right, 34 meters. Oh, I see. You took a cheeky way. So I was intended to find Tefra first. Bonk. Galena. I won? <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> Thanks for playing with us. Okay. Well, game just ends like that, I guess. All right. And neither of them are here anymore? Nope. <laughs> All right, cool. That was a nice little way to teach me how to use that tool. Signal scope. I like it. Wow. This game's this game is already good. Top notch quality. Wait, frequency outer wilds ventures. Huh. So somebody's whistling on that and there's banjo music coming from that. I liked it when they were synced up there for a moment. So interesting. Oh. Oh. So, uh, what's your name again? Uh, the first one to go. Feldspar. Did I find you? Talk to Spinel. 
Fishing rhyme, fishing rhyme, singing helps me pass the time. You leaving the crater? Guess we'll all be a little busy without you around to lend a hand. That big water planet, giant steep, that's where I'd go. Why's that? One time, after the rest of the village had left to sleep and was just the two of us sitting around the campfire, Gabbro told me about their first trip to Giant Steep. They landed their ship easily enough in the waves, but couldn't see too far down, on account of how murky the water was, I guess. Too dark. Gabbro wants to see what lay beneath the surface, so they decided to travel deeper. They traveled down and down, but suddenly, Gabbro couldn't go any further. Hmm. I underestimated how boring this would be, but tell me more. I will, I was just pausing dramatically. As though exercising a will of its own, the water was refusing to let Gabbro go any deeper. It held Gabbro back, almost as if it were trying to protect them from something. And then, in the terrible darkness, Gabbro saw it. The tentacle of some hideous beast. <laughs> no, I'll say, is it all true? Heard it from Gabbro himself. Gabbro can be a little fanciful, sure, but they aren't a liar. I mean, probably, anyway. I guess if you want to know the, if the story's entirely true, you can go see Giant Steep for yourself. Right. I will. Eventually. Yeah. I'm bouncing at this place. Oh, okay, this is cool. And pretty. Hold on, I'm gonna get up here and then just... Oh. Wow. I love this game for its atmosphere alone already. This is amazing. This is the kind of place I would love in real life. What's over here? What happens if I jump? I don't want to walk all the way back up here though, so I'm not going to find out. Moraine? Hmm? Oh. Hello, astronaut. This is good weather for your launch, right? That's lucky. What are you up to? I'm using my signal scope to pick up sounds from distant planets. It's set to the Outer Wilds Ventures frequency so I can pick up the Traveler's music. Last night I heard Rebex banjo coming from Brittle Hollow. I hope that means they're safe. I can hear different planets too. It depends on what time of day or night it is since different planets are in the sky at different times. Signal scopes are cool. <laughs> You're right. Oh. Zoom in. Wait, hold up. Oh. Oh. Hold on. I'm I'm closing in on something. Oh, I see. Oh, but it's like a very specific spot. Oh, like right there on that one. What about... Oh, I see. Yep, that's Rebec, I guess. Is that supposed to be the drums one? Wait, what? It wasn't that. Oh, you were hiding behind that other one. Oh, my. <laughs> that's the sun. All right, Feldspar. Man, I like this thing. That's so cool. Boing, boing. I like how I can boing around everywhere, too. Observatory that way. Zero G cave. Who are you? What are you? Talk to Arcos. Hi, astronaut. I don't know how to give so many voices to so many people. <laughs> you know the patch of ghost matter inside this fence? Gosson said it used to be bigger when they were hatchling, because ghost matter evaporates. It just takes a super long time to go away. I hope there's still ghost matter in the village when I'm a grown-up. Ghost matter is awesome. Ghost matter is super cool. It'll burn the heck out of you. <laughs> yeah, I heard it touching it feels so bad. Or touching it hurts so bad it feels like your whole hand's on fire. Try not to walk into any in space, okay? That sounds bad and painful. 
Can I? Oh, fetch. <laughs> I love that the game let me do that, though. Like, it actually straight up let me do it. Danger. Inside this fence is a pocket of ghost matter, a strange and dangerous substance that's invisible to the naked eye. The good news is, is that you can detect ghost matter with a camera. Moving through ghost matter is uniquely painful and will probably kill you. Don't complain to me if, <laughs> if you hurt yourself fooling around. Wait, how do I use a camera? Oh, use camera. Take snapshot. Whoa, that's cool. Why do I have two buttons to take a snapshot? Man. I'm not going to get anything accomplished in this episode, but I love it. I love it so much. Oh, scout launcher. Um, launch scout. Oh, is it going to hit the ground yet? Or is this just a new satellite? Oh, there it goes. There. I love that. Like, this is... These things happen in real time. Like, that entity is still out there. And if I just leave it alone for a second... Oh, suddenly it's traveled. Oh, it's about to hit the ground. Rotate camera. Huh. That's so cool. Oh, it's embedded in a cliff. See, I get to <laughs> I get to determine things like that. That's so cool. Whoopsie, not what I meant to do. What is this? North Youngbark Crater. Huh. Northwest Geyser Mountains. I should probably explore all these things, huh? South Quantum Grove Crater. East Nomai Ruin. Ooh, let's look at the ruins real quick. I'm sure it's, like, intended to land there, right? What's that? Flying past. Oh, yes, these things. I saw them earlier. Um. Oh, there we go. Huh. Interesting. It's a unique little way to turn the camera. It's going to be difficult to control sometimes, but, you know, it's whatever. So what about this direction? Oh, look, it's moving in real time. Eh, not quite, but, you know. Uh, they always land in cliffs. Okay, understandable. Have a nice day. Okay, you can't really see anything because of the trees. Got it. Alright, well, I should get going. I, I'm i sure some... Well, hold on. This something or other said something about quantum... No, Geyser Mountain? Oh, this was Quantum Grove Creator. Okay, that's the one I wanted to see, so... But couldn't really. Oh well. See your G cave, but what's over here? Oh, I can't get up there, can I? Darn. I I love that it's the kind of game that lets you see your whole character model too. Ah, <sighs> everything about this just makes my brain go happy. Talk to Gossin. Hey, I thought I might see you before the big launch. Well, you... You got messed up a little bit, huh? I don't... Do I want to know what accident caused that? Nerves getting the better of you? <laughs> right, like you were nervous for your first flight. I'm just gonna say it. I'm a little, little nervous, yeah. Good. Everyone should be a bit nervous going into space. I got cocky during my first flight and nearly put a new crater in the moon. Still, I was never as green as you. Hey, I've gotten better. Think so, do you? Feel like proving it to your old flight coach? There's a satellite, which is definitely not just a piece of broken mining equipment. 
set up down in the Zero-G cave and in need of repairs. If you're looking for a little last-minute Zero-G practice, head down the lift and into the cave. Or don't, so long as you're confident you can make ship repairs in space. One repaired satellite coming up. Cool. Get to it and try not to concuss yourself right before your first launch. Okay, I'll do that. I'll get a drink as I'm going down. Whoa. Even looks like space. Kind of. Act. Oh, what? Fetch. No, go back down. Go back down. All right. Walk out this way. I thought that was like a door or something for me to open, so I instinctively press F for flashlight. Huh, and it doesn't turn at full speed. I kind of like that. That way I can't just go, ooh, what's this? What's this? What, huh? Look at that long cave upwards. Oh, this is beautiful. I love every moment of this. I don't know why I'm whispering now. Am I kicking it? Is that what's happening? Oh, we got low gravity, boys. Zero G cave. Suit up. Oh. Let's see, return suit. Left control, left shift, down and up thrust. Oh, so that, uh, that drone wasn't to prepare me for flying the ship necessarily, as it was to prepare me for flying me. Interesting. Talk to Tuff. Hey, hey, nice of you to drop down. <laughs> Give me the dirt. <laughs> I'm getting some zero-g time in. So you're going in there, in the cave. Huh. What? No, I'm fine. Great. Great and fine. You don't look fine. <laughs> well, you know I hate that cave, so I don't know why you're making me talk about it. Well. <laughs> Now I've got hand sweats. Nice. Gravity point four times. I love that it tells me stuff like that. Huh. And the thrust still kicks in when I, like, jump. Or when I can no longer move naturally, I guess. Oh, uh, nope, okay. Not happening like that. Okay, I guess this is real zero G. Not quite. Gravity one times. Or point one times, I should say. Huh. Interesting. What's this up here? Oh wait, that's where I just came from, isn't it? Yeah. All right, gotta watch my fuel, I guess. Oh, yep, this this is zero G, I guess. Zero out of three. Wait, hold on, what was that? Yeah, this is actual zero G. What is this thing? It said I could... Oh, that's not the right way. Oh, this is going to take some getting used to. Oh, boy. Okay, so I couldn't interact with that anyway. Oh, flip. Ow. Okay, so that's up. This is down. Oh, lock on. Okay. Match velocity. Velocity matched. So you're out of three repaired. Hold on, so I need to make my way over here. And then... Wait, what do I do about this? Oh. Satellite hold to repair. Satellite node. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, the fuel thing's gonna stress me out. Oh, I see, though. I see how this works. Okay, never mind. Maybe this isn't gonna take as much getting used to as I thought. It just took a moment to adjust. Alright. Oh, lock on. Velocity matched. There we go two out of three repaired, so I'm guessing the next I just have to continue this way. Ooh. No, it's not that. Alright, I'm trying to follow this buzzing sound I can hear. 
Is that coming from inside the thing? I am so confused. 50% fuel remaining. Okay, good to know. Oh, yes it is. Okay, I see. Hold match velocity. Gotcha. Perfect. Training simulation complete. Got it. All right, now I just need to go that way. And hopefully I have enough fuel to get all the way out of here. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's what I was trying to do, but then it did it for me. Okay, yeah, now I have to actually thrust myself out. Mm. Okay, yeah, now we're back to a bit stronger gravity. That was a cool exercise. I already love how this game is teaching me. Peace out, scrubs. I'm taking this with me. <laughs> okay, no, I should probably return it, huh? Sad. There it goes. Does it have full, full fuel now? Heck yeah. <laughs> Alright, don't need it though. Alas, I do not need it. Alright, activate lift. Oh man, I love this so much already. All right, reporting for duty. Nicely done. Of course, it'll be a little more stressful when you're hurtling through space, but just remember you're training and try not to hit anything big. I can see you're itching to get off this rock, so go get launch codes from the observatory and get out of here already. Best of luck out there. And hey, try to avoid getting yourself killed now that I've put so much time into training you. Got it? Okay. Good to know. <laughs> Good to know. I should say will do. Zero-G cave. Hey, oh, hey, come say hi to your old flight coach before launch. I've got zero-G training set up if you want a refresher. Okay, well, anyway, observatory. The observatory. Oh, that flag is actually moving. Barely, but it's moving. Zoom level. Wait. Oh, uh, I can zoom out or I can zoom all the way in okay that's cool what's coming ah the planet coming up oh I love that something about hearing that nice little banjo music it's just like the you know the classical what you would I don't know might call country instruments like that's that's just a very soothing sensation to me I guess. Hornfells. Gossen. Feldspar. Esker. And Slate. Alright, so two of the people I've talked to have already been out there. This one, I'm guessing this one's Gossen. Um, I don't, I already forgot what Slate looks like. Um, but I can only guess that these two are Hornfels and Esker. And I'm guessing that Feldspar isn't here because he was supposedly the first he. I instinctively go to he. They're all they. They supposedly went first and never came back or something. So yeah, talk to Hal. Hey, 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 it's my favorite astronaut. Launch day at last, huh, buddy? It's the translator tool's inaugural flight, too. Oh, I'm so excited. It's making me nauseous. Just think, you'll be able to translate any know my text you want, anywhere you are. The two of us put a lot of hours into inventing that tool, so don't break it, okay? <laughs> oh, jeez. Do not break it. Uh, ignore me, okay? I'm just nervous, and I'm not even the one going into space. How are you feeling? I'm excited. Good. You've only been waiting for this day since we were hatchlings. I can't wait to see all your training pay off. 
So, what's the dirt? You here to see the new Nomai statue? New statue? You haven't heard? Gabriel brought it back with them from Giant Steep, and Hornfell's just finished prepping it for display. This right, this is it right here. Neat, huh? Makes me wish we could see what real life Nomai looks like. But, what a real life Nomai looks like. But I guess this is as close as we'll ever get. Check it out. Looks like they had fur. Fur is weird. This is the first fully intact statue ever found, you know. And for how old it is, it's in great shape. Ah, oh, jeez. I got a little carried away there. Go on. You have a ship to launch. Take care of yourself out there, you hear? Well, that's a Nomai. This remarkably intact statue was carved by the Nomai, an ancient species who dwelled in our solar system thousands of years ago. The statue provides us with our most detailed look yet at the Nomai, who appear to have been covered with a layer of fur. Note the decorative jewelry that has been carved as part of the antlers. Though their artifacts and structures have been found on almost every planet in this solar system, we still have no idea where this species came from or what happened to them. Ah, uh, interesting. Cool, Do oh, they had three eyes. We got four, they got three. Coming soon. Future site of our next exhibit. If you've enjoyed our, your time with the Outer Wilds, oh, please consider supporting our planned museum expansion. Our quest to explore the furthest reaches of our solar system wouldn't be possible without generous visitors like you. We thank you profusely for your support, and we hope to see you again soon. Is that an actual message from the devs? Yeah. Uh, I wonder if that's for one of the DLCs. Hmm. I might have to consider getting those after I go through this game. Stars like our sun generate light and heat by fusing hydrogen into helium. As it grows older, the star runs out of hydrogen and starts to contract. Hmm. As the star's core contracts, it gets hotter, causing the outer layers to expand. The star has become a red giant. When the core is hot enough, it starts to fuse helium into carbon. If a star is massive enough, it will continue to fuse carbon into heavier elements like iron. Ultimately, the star will collapse under its own gravity and then explode in a violent event called the supernova. Based on Chert's observations, this will one day be the fate of our own sun. Say it. Ruins? Who knows what that is? Who? This crystal was taken from a Nomai ruin on Brittle Hollow. It seems to create a local gravity distortion and was with my, uh, with that, huh? I know what I'm saying. And was most likely used to traverse steep surfaces. Try it out. Oh heck yeah. Nice. That's cool. I I hope that's saying I get to use stuff like that. The Nomai technology brought back from space by our astronauts has been a great boon to Outer Wilds and Outer Wild Ventures, allowing us to modify expedition gear in exciting and useful ways. For example, the Little Scout now boasts a warp retrieval system that allows astronauts to recall their scouts almost immediately, or instantly. I can read instantly. This has dramatically reduced the number of scouts lost to the depths of space. What you see here are parts of the Nomai skeleton. We can tell from their skulls that they possessed antlers and, quite unusually, only three eyes. The Nomai body was most likely adapted for living exclusively on land. The differences in the Nomai's anatomy, such as their shockingly fragile bone structure, shows us that Harthians couldn't have descended from Nom Nomayan ancestors. It's not clear where the Nomai originated from or why they disappeared. We hope to find more clues to this puzzle as we explore our solar system. So is that hinting toward what, what my real objective is? Or eventual objective? Aside from the dwellings and structures they built, the Nomai also made art. This decorated pottery was discovered on Brittle Hollow. Some ancient Nomai art depicts strange animals, foreign celestial objects, and other subjects that can't be found in our solar system, which makes us wonder whether the Nomai originated elsewhere in the universe or simply had vibrant imaginations. 
Were the Nomai born in our solar system, or were they born among other stars and planets? And if they were, how and why did they come here? These are just some of the questions we hope to answer through further xenoarchaeological expeditions. Why is that the one word I could say easily? Xenoarchaeological? Whoa. Hey. Cassava. We're nearly ready. F Felix and I have finished construction, and she says calibrating the device won't take long. Fortunately, the Adel Rock's lack of atmosphere will make calibration simple. After all this time, I'm through to finally resume our search. Huh. I can't translate that thing. This piece of Nomai writing was essential to deciphering their unique language. Although the text is linear, this text is linear. Nomai text often branches from, off from a central point. Interestingly, each branch tends to be written by a different author. Oh, can I? No, I still can't look. So that's demonstrating what it would normally look like. Cool. I love all of this. Watch closely. These balls move on their own. The ground is perfectly level, so what do you think causes this spooky motion? The answer is the moon. As it orbits our planet, the Adel Rock's gravity pulls on objects from different directions. In fact, it's pulling on you right now. Oh, hey, look, there they go. They're moving. And my vision is to go with them. Nice. Cool. Oh, what's this fish, though? I didn't look at this. Angler, okay. <laughs> this angler fish specimen was found attached to the landing gear of one of our ships that flew close to Dark Bramble. It appears well suited to living in dark places with minimal atmosphere. Oh, that's it. Okay. What's all this out here? Hmm. The strange mo rock moving around this grotto appears to react to conscious observation. The level-headed among us realize there must be some sort of optical illusion at play, but Gabbro claims the rock exists in all possible states until it is observed. Whatever that means. Whatever is actually happening, both sides of this debate agree that the effect is extremely creepy. So you're saying if I just look at it, it'll move theoretically? Or do I have to do something like this? No. Oh, there we go. So I have to look at it and then look away? Yep. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> How interesting. Alright, so I'll probably go up here now. Cool. View map. I'll do that in a moment. Look at all this machinery. Oh. View map. Whoa, Timber Hearth, you are here. The Hourglass Twins. Dark Bramble, Brittle Hollow, Giant's Deep. Okay, so I've got three, four, five planets to explore, assuming the Hourglass Twins are two. How interesting. Ooh, again with that. Close map. Wait, hold on, hold on. I didn't look at all the controls completely. Or am I going to the Adel Rock first? Zoom view, rotate view, yes. Pan view, oh yes, there we go. I want to look at Dark Bramble. Oh, that looks heckin' awesome. Alright, left control. What is this? I'm guessing that's something I am supposed to wonder about right now, and nobody actually knows. Ash Twin and Ember Twin. Are they caught in each other's gravity? Is that what's happening? Oh, that's Timber Hearth. Hollow's Lantern and Brittle Hollow. Cool, and then Giant's Deep. 
at least like space stations around. Huh. Cool. All right, you Hornfells. Ha! Ah, there you are. I just finished pre-flight observations, and local conditions are good. Time to get our newest astronaut off the ground. And you'll be our first astronaut ever equipped with a Know My Translator tool. I confess, I've been giddy all day just thinking about it. We're better equipped than ever to unravel the mysteries of the Nomai. You and Hal should be very proud of your work. Tell me, what's your plan once you're in space? I'll learn more about the Nomai, meet up with other travelers. I want to go somewhere no one's gone before. I think I'll start with some, something small. Huh. You know what? I want, I want to learn more about the Nomai, yes. I also want to go where no one's ever gone before. So I'm going to say, I'm going to wing it. Planning to follow in the steps of Feldspar and the Great Outer Wilds Ventures tradition, are you? <laughs> I might have guessed. Well, see if you can't put that translator tool of yours to good use while you're out there. Well then, looks like all that's left is to send you off. All in all, it's a fine day for a launch. I'm ready to get off this rock. I'm ready to die in space. <laughs> Honestly, I'm ready to die in space. I'm not one for superstition, but isn't that kind of unlucky to say before a launch? Eh. any rate, here are the launch codes. Try not to worry too much. Our ships are every bit as safe as Slate could be persuaded to make them. <laughs> Best of luck out there. Let me know if I can do any, or if I can help you with anything. Launch codes. Huh. Interesting. All right, well, I'm gonna wander around back to the... Oh, yes, it's the rock. <laughs> Wandering back to... Oh. That's not creepy. Is it replaying what I actually just did? What the heck? Also, that's cool how it had my reticle right directly in the center of the middle eye. Oh my gosh, that was whack. And I'm pretty sure that actually just replayed exactly what I just went through because, like, sure, it could have played a generic scene that, you know, everybody's gone through these things. Um, but, like, all the angles it was showing everything at, like, what are the odds people did them at the exact same angle I did? Big thanks to these additional founding members of Outer Wilds Ventures, without whom we would never have gotten off the ground. Matthew Steinhauer, Ben Etherington. Oh dear. How long is this? This is a, you know, thank thing. <laughs> Quirty you up the pie. Jordan Frith, Tom Cummings, Sean Shark Templar, Fer Farrell, 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 whatever. Stephen Ursil, Ryan slash Omrecker. There's no way that's actually Elm Wrecker, right? <laughs> oh, clockwise from top left. Hornfells, Gossin, Slate, and Feldspar. Okay, yeah. That's that's kind of what I expected. Wait, hold on, hold on. No, Feldspar is the one in the bottom right. Then who's Esker? Hmm. Huh. Outer Wilds Ventures, Timber Hearth's first and only space program, was founded to explore the farthest reaches of our solar system. Feldspar was the first Hearthian to be intentionally launched into space. They completed the first orbit around Timber Hearth and later made the first of what would be many landings on our moon, the Adel Rock. Cool. Oh, look at this. I love how I'm experiencing full day night cycles here. Wow, did I really wander all that way? Like, all the way around and everything, only to have a path back that way? Also, I am really tempted to jump. 
but I probably shouldn't. Talk to Hal. Crap. Which one were you and what voice did I give you? Oh. Hey, hey. So did you get a good look at that Nomai statue? I... Yeah, I'm gonna wing his voice again. <laughs> the statue was glowing. Why was it glowing? Whoa, whoa. The statue was doing what? So its eyes opened, and then you saw images from your own memories and glowing lights flying around? You mean like a hallucination? <laughs> Listen, no offense, but are you sure you're okay to launch? Like, medically speaking? Yeah, you know what? Don't worry about it. Maybe you should sit down for a bit and take it easy. I'd hate for anything bad to happen to you. It happened if you tried to launch while you're not feeling great. But hey, when you are ready, then you can make the most of our translator tool. <laughs> I can't believe it's all grown up and leaving for space already. For real though, I'm glad you're the one carrying it and not like Rebeck. They'd fall on it for sure. Say, if you want to do a short trip to just get your space legs under you, you could check out the ruins on the Addle Rock. I'd love to learn what those are. Good luck and safe flying. Okay. Why do I want to jump so much? I'm sure I'll have chances later. Besides, look at this view. I also love how the water spewing up even... Like, it doesn't spew in the same direction every time, necessarily. It's like it's reacting to the wind. Oh. Whose house is this? Oh. Tephra. Hello, astronaut. You going into space today? Or are you going into space and never coming back like Feldspar did? Don't worry. I'll come back. That's what Feldspar's Ted too, but they never did. Hornfels will be really sad if you don't come back. Like, how sad it makes them to talk about Feldspar. So, you should make sure you don't get lost in space, too. Okay. I'll try. Boing. Ah, yes, here I am. And before I get on there, you know, that's been a heckin' long episode as it is, so... I'm going to sit here, roast my marshmallow, and uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, I look forward to this game. I haven't even, like, actually started it, and I'm already super hyped. But uh, until next time, like bacon, stay crispy, my friends, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.